Property Finance Uncut, the must-listen podcast for anyone with a mortgage. Find out the truth about what Australia's lenders are up to and how to make sure you're in the best possible position when it comes to your property finance. And for anyone with a mortgage, you just would have heard, maybe, or this is the news flash. Reserve Bank of Australia, the RBA, have increased the official cash rate in June, 6th of June, 2023, up another 25 basis points to 4.1%. Joining me in the studio, Paul Glossop, uh, CEO, Finney Mortgages, finney.com.au for Property Finance Uncut, this time of the month where we get together and work out what's going on with the world. Paul, what is going on with the world? What's going on in Australia? Interest rates still keep going north when we were told. We were told Three years ago that rates won't go up until 2024. 2024 yet, Phil. Unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable. It's uh, it's starting to become a, a bit more of the um, yeah. I guess uh, the what's what's old is new is again. Is that, that that whole rhetoric that we talked about of no change was basically every month for for a very very prolonged period of time, and now we're pretty much uh, expecting that there will be change every month. There will be change and. Unfortunately, um, the brunt is going to be borne by the uh, the bulk of, of middle Australia. Um, and the fact of the matter is, is that um, you know, we, we may not be out of the woods just yet based on the, the most recent inflation data that only came out as of last week. So, yeah, we're going to have to brace ourselves. There is some good news, which I think we'll talk about a little bit today as well, though, for those who have been tuning into some of the um, probably more of the, the changes to policy from the big four and how they're going to service potential existing clients and new clients as well, though, which is um, probably some positive stuff that's happened over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, there's there's quite a lot of hurt in this market um, for a lot of people now. Uh, I, I've just quickly, and we're, we're recording this literally, you know, minutes after the RBA has uh, handed down its its um, its announcement. And um, a couple of bits that I've picked up so far, uh, I, I think they're saying now there's 15% of all Australians are in sort of this negative cash flow position where the money that they're bringing into their household What's going out every single month is less. Uh, sorry, is more. So they're in negative cash flow. So they're starting to really tip into those savings that that was built up over the COVID uh, period and pandemic. A lot of which has been a driver of, of inflation. Uh, what I also hear, we we saw inflation uh, moved uh, back up this month, uh, albeit slightly from uh, a decrease. Uh, so the effects of uh, further tightening doesn't seem to be taking place right now. But Paul, from what I understand also, this might not be the end of things. ANZ is predicting potentially 4.6%. So two more interest rate rises of 25 basis points. Their base positioning as of today, and this changes like the weather, um, is uh, a good chance for one more, maybe two. Uh, So I think everyone should be getting ready for that uh, 4.35% official cash rate at a point in time. They're saying, Paul, they don't think well, they're not going to expecting to see interest rates start going down towards the end of 2024. Mm. Thoughts? It's 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 really interesting now because more and more we're reading into what's driving this inflation story, and and only as of the data last week. And I don't want to get too technical from this because this is about mortgage holders. But the reality is is that now we've got a whole host of of Australians, typically they are now looking sub 40. They're the ones who are actually spending far, far less. So they're the ones who are tightening their belts. But then we've got, on the other hand, the baby boomers who are, they're out there. They're the ones spending the money on the dinners. They're the ones going on the on the holidays. They're the ones expanding their wallets and, and spending more. And essentially, they're the ones who are accounting for uh, all of this additional inflation based on the data at the moment. And I guess the, the irony is is that you know anyone who is potentially on a um, potentially indexed fixed income or potentially a defined benefit scheme as an example, typically they've been linked to inflation or, or CPI, and you know we've gone through a decade that they've seen that their increase in their actual monthly or annual income has done nothing other than probably maybe incipiently be sub one percent for a very long period of time, and all of a sudden now boom they're talking seven ten percent increases in their income which is, you know, most of these people are the ones without debts, without all these additional things that are going to hurt them. And now they've got more money to spend. So you sort of start to wonder, where does this stop? Um, you know, we do note that there was a bit of an adjustment with the, I think the fuel excise, um, the, the cuts to that were sort of taken into account for, for the May data as well. So it will be interesting to see how that then refers to 
the next month's worth of inflation data. And it will be interesting to see if that was just a, a spot increase because there were some economists saying that that may have, have aided a lot more to those numbers than, than the actual spend itself. But the reality is here we are. We've got another rate increase. We're 4.10. Um, we're going to be paying something with a six in front of it for the most part of residential mortgage holders. And to your point, um, some of the big fours are now saying that, hey, there might be one or two more to come. Others are saying we're potentially at terminal rates. Um, you know, a lot of these other things are starting to come into the fold here. But one thing that's not stopping is, is migration. And this is going to be a very perplexing time for Australian property because we've got 800,000 people coming to Australia in 2023 and 2024. We've got the, the record lowest amount of approvals for building starts in that same time. And we're starting with a base of about 1% vacancy rate for rentals. And they're growing at their fastest rate in many markets on record, or if in some cases at a minimum 10 to 15, yeah. 20 year high. So how are we going to fix this problem if we can't build more property? Because funding is not going to become easier, that's for sure. It's not going to, because it's just not going to be accessible. And we'll talk about some changes to to how you're going to be skewing your mortgages in a moment. But I, I think you used the word uh, perplexing this market. Now, if you think of that it's a tale of two markets, you, you have people who the the impacts of these interest rate rises and a higher cost of living, et cetera, is biting, is hurting. Uh, and that's manifesting itself in some pretty serious social um, uh, issues and concerns uh, facing those which are hurting the most. Then on the other side of the the ledger you have um, uh, people who don't have any debt, who have cash savings, uh, and they're still happy to spend. Let's remember that inflation hits everyone the same. Um, it's just going to burn through their dough a little bit more. Now, if you have that money parked in investments and it's returning good returns, well, you know, uh, the, the 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 wealthier cohort have probably got a little bit easier. The wealthy cohort without uh, a mortgage. Um, this is not uh, an economics um, podcast, and it's not about macro and microeconomic policy. But I do know Paul. Um, from the very quick readings that I've had in relation to uh, today's uh, interest rate rise. And this is something that I've been talking about quite a lot over the last year or so, which I now see the language starting to resonate. It's this notion of productivity. So this notion of productivity is being pulled into the agenda of a driver of inflation. Now, what that is, um, you're having to pay more for an hour's work of someone and you're not getting the upside benefit in the productivity of that person doing their, their job. So one of the biggest crises, crises facing Australian business right now is this notion of productivity. How do you get the people that you pay a wage to to do more or do adequate within the time taken that you're getting them to pay, uh, you're paying them to do that piece of work? And productivity is at a crisis setting in many ways. A lot of that is COVID-induced hangovers. A lot of that is you know, trials and tribulation of trying to get people back into the office. It's all about the productivity of Australian workers, getting them to do more. And that will stifle inflation in many ways. And you'll see it happening. You'll see it happening right across industry right now and business with the Commonwealth Bank, for example, having a realisation that productivity is central to an office-based environment, mandating 50% of, uh, of the whole workforce to be working in the office. Um, sorry, 100% of the workforce operating in the office 50% of the time. National Australia Bank has mandated senior managers in the office 100% of the time. So this is what you're going to start seeing, this groundswell of momentum around productivity to get Australia working effectively together, to get more value out of the time, energy and effort spent on wages. And this ain't going to go away soon. You're going to see it's going to be a key focus. And the RBA spoke about that today as a key driver or something that's manifesting this ongoing issue towards inflation. So watch this space. We'll talk about it a little bit more. But Paul, the reality is, is rates going up 4.1%, highest interest rate in 11 years, highest I've ever known it. I've been working hard, calling up banks, uh, trying to get uh, sharper rates. And let me let me report favorably. Most have been responsive and reactive to that. Um, quick tip from me, call the discharge line. Don't, call, don't go through the average uh, standard bank line. Google discharge phone number, discharge email, X bank. They'll put it straight up there. You'll go straight through to someone and they'll be willing to do deals. So get on the front foot, start doing that now. Your mortgage broker can help you doing a lot of that work. But Paul, but you alluded to serviceability changes. Tell me about that. So this is probably one of the, the more important things that have come out of the last 12 months. Now, the reality, if anyone's sort of followed what happens for monetary policy and, and essentially how you borrow money and how you're serviced, if you earn hypothetically $100,000, 
bank X is going to then say, okay, well, based on your $100,000, based on your spending and based on your savings, uh, we will lend you a multiplier of your income. Now, let's say hypothetically that's $600,000 or six times that gross annual income in this example. Where APRA intervened uh, quite some time ago now um, is essentially saying that, well, look, rates at, at a particular point in time, let's say hypothetically the retail rate was being charged at 5% interest. So that $600,000 that you can borrow was being charged at approximately 5% interest. APRA looked at that as saying, well, if we're in a downward trend of interest rates, um, we run a risk that people might all of a sudden uh, be lent money that when a point in time, i.e. now, um, that rates start going up, that they might have been serviced on a price point that was a little bit too cheap and they might run into a risk. And you know, anyone who's old enough and, and probably paid a bit of attention to the US financial crisis is that there was a point in time there where people been lent money where they basically didn't have the income to pay it back. So they were servicing people with an extra 3% buffer. So APRA added on this buffer of circa, well, initially it started about 2.5%. It was increased to 3% in 2021. And that still sits there today. So if you go to a bank or a broker right now and you give them all your details, they say, I want to borrow the maximum amount. They will say, okay, great. You're going to be borrowing your money at 6%, but we're actually going to service you at 9% as that example. Now, forever, since then, uh, everyone who goes there is essentially going to be serviced that. But what has changed recently um, in the last few weeks and in, in, in ANZ's case a couple of months ago, quite secretly and a little bit quietly, is that if you are a, a good a borrower, i.e. you have not had any late or, or tardy repayments over the last 12 months, and you're essentially going to be sub 80% LBR, so quite an attractive person to the bank. And they, in some cases, in Westpac as an example, they are assessing that same borrower if they can tick all of their major criteria. Instead of being serviced at that additional 3% cap, they're in some cases now saying we'll service you with a 1% buffer. And I think in a lot of those instances, they're assessing that to say, well, we see that we're pretty close to the top of this actual interest rate growth cycle. The reality is it'll probably come down. So they're, they're mitigating their risk by saying, look, we're probably at the top. And we also know that there's going to be a lot of potential borrowers who actually are at the point where they may otherwise be in what this mortgage prison term has been in. And that's the risk of a lot of people. They're saying, well, I can't, I can't actually service any other banks. So they've got me essentially hamstrung and I can't borrow. Well, now all of a sudden we're seeing a lot of the big four and essentially I assume they'll all come in the line eventually to take that serviceability cap from 3%, as long as you're a good borrower, then down to about 1%, which essentially takes about 2% of what you couldn't borrow only probably three or four, five months ago back on the table. So you actually have options and where brokers are right now, their role is to say, this bank's changed their policy, this bank's changed their policy. You won't fit here, but you will fit there. So if you are in a fixed position, and you're coming off a fix into a variable, but you're thinking, hang on, I've been told by my bank that I won't be able to service, so I can't move my money anyway. This is where a broker's job is to really understand banks' policy because it has changed and the landscape has changed dramatically. So the key takeaway then for this podcast, Paul, something practical people can do. So if they are sitting there, and, and from what I hear is this sort of notion of this interest rate cliff has sort of moved forward a few months and there's a realisation that it's happening uh, right now, what Paul is talking about there is this this mortgage prison, and that is the idea that you can't refinance your mortgage because you don't meet the service bill requirements of a another lender. Therefore, you stay with the bank that you're with right now, and you're able to pay the interest repayments there. It'll just continue ad infinitum. Like that, that's a big problem because it means you're probably overpaying potentially on on interest rates. Unless you do what I just spoke about, call out the bank and say. I'm getting these sort of rates elsewhere. Can you match it? Yes or no? Most of the time, they'll negotiate. Most of the time, they'll negotiate if you're a good borrower. So the point being now, Paul, is that they've changed the requirements or they've reduced the service bill requirements means that you may be able to secure a more competitive interest rate somewhere else. But means you've got to do the time, energy, and effort and the pain sometimes of a refinance, a refinance, a new application with a new lender to reset your mortgage, you know, the position. Now, you talk, talk about sort of bringing that buffer down to 1%, which means that you can potentially borrow more. That doesn't necessarily mean you should borrow as much as you possibly can. I think in this environment, you've got to be really, really comfortable with your debt levels. Just because a bank says that you can borrow a million dollars doesn't mean that you should borrow a million dollars. If the house you want only requires a four or five hundred thousand dollar mortgage take the four or five hundred thousand dollar mortgage don't redline to the top end because when you get it's instance and issues like this when things do change and guess what things do change sometimes for the better sometimes for the worse 
you're not up against it. And one of those 15% of all Australian families now who are in negative cash flow. So that's where you don't want to be as a property investor. The secret of property investment, show about property investment, is you want to be able to hold your properties for the long term without having to tip in too much money to hold them. That's really base and simple. A lot of people chase positive yielding properties. Most property investors I know when they're growing their portfolios want it to be as close as possible to zero as possible so they don't have to wear the cash flow cost so they can continue to grow their portfolio elsewhere. So just because these things are changing and you can get favorable terms and conditions elsewhere and potentially borrow more money, don't always take the biggest check, Paul. That, that's man, it's probably the most sage advice I've ever heard you say, Phil, and I've heard some rubbish come out of your mouth. Yeah, don't don't, 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 you're not alone. <laughs> a lot of people have said that. <laughs> don't go big. <laughs> but but I think yeah, your, your testament to this, and you're, you know, you you you've spoken about this so so many times for for such a long period of time, and you know people can say, look, you tune in, you're going to hear the same thing. Well, there's a reason behind that is that. Ultimately, you, you, people who are investing in property, they need to understand that there's going to be a fluctuation in basically every single uh, aspect of the property, most particularly uh, the finance side of things. And over the last probably 24 to 36 months, we've seen the biggest fluctuation that we've probably ever seen. And the irony is that was preceded by 10 years of absolutely no movement at all um, and very predictable times. But the reality here, and I think the biggest lesson is that if you do qualify to refinance and take your current fixed debt or your debt from one lender to the other, A, I would suggest that it's worth the hassle first and foremost, but B, even though there might be more opportunity to borrow more, really stress test your own cash flows. Do your math on what your expenditure is. And if you're not intimate with the knowledge of how much you spend versus how much you keep on the end of every week, Get intimate with that because if you don't know those numbers, you can't really do anything effectively. You're essentially making assumptions and these are some of the biggest assumptions you'll ever make. So you need to know your numbers to be able to make these decisions. And you can't rely on the advice of a broker or a bank to, to tell you what you can borrow because that's one aspect of the whole equation. The other aspect and probably the most important part about the longevity in property investing and borrowing, as your point was, mate, is, is longevity. And longevity only comes by being comfortable holding a property long-term and that comes by being able to make sure that you meet your repayment requirements comfortably and can still live your life in the meantime. Yeah, it's not hard, but so many people get it wrong. Now, Paul, a couple of quick questions and and this is sort of a bit technical or tactical, but um, I, I spoke before around, I'm calling up banks saying, hey, what a sharper interest rate. I hate doing it. I hate it. Yep. It sucks. Um, I get angry um, and I get rolled up about it. And if I, if I sit there and feel like I'm with a fight with someone, I call up a bank, right? Because I get to vent and I give them a hard time. I don't know if you ever heard me on the phone to one of these banks, but it's not a nice experience. Now, can my mortgage broker do that for me? Because if I've got, this question is, if I've got home loans, which was originated through a broker and not my current broker, can my current broker call up and say, hey, you've got to do better for this person? Because I, I'm now with Finney Mortgages. You guys are working up a, a huge refinance for me across, oh, I've got to be 10 plus loans. Um, yeah. But a lot of them sort of, while that goes through, I want to get sharper rates on it. Can they do that for me? That's that's one of the biggest things that they do do, Phil. And, and I think to your point there, mate, is that it's not only a frustrating experience for the vast majority of those calls to the banks, it's also a very timely one, a oh, time-consuming one. Rather. That's soul-destroying, soul-destroying work. Everything about it. And, and, it's, and it's not an accident. I mean, let's let's make sure we're all over. <laughs> Don't it's be cynical, poor. They love taking phone calls from people <laughs> to give them cheaper mortgages. I'm telling you, I'll speak to them all the time and go, We've got teams of people standing by waiting to field your call because we want to give you a cheaper interest rate. That's what they say. It's, I mean, that, that's the reality. But by, by the way, I do it. And when I get the outcome I want, I'm pretty happy. I sit there and I get my calculator and I go, you know, 10 times this much. It's, I've just saved, I've just made $30,000. You get straight onto to Amazon and buy yourself a massive jar of beluga caviar, no <laughs> doubt, to just spend the extra cash. Mate, it's exactly made. what I do. So, but <laughs> but my broker can do this for me, right? But there's no there's no benefit in the broker. Like the question is, there's no benefit in the broker doing it because they're not getting paid on it. So and then, why, and why does the broker do it? They might, get, they might actually they might actually lose money. One thing they're 100 going to do is, is spend hours doing this, and that is their job. I mean, if we look at what Finney do, and, and I go in the office and, and work with my mortgage broker team and sit there, and and unfortunately, a lot of the time. They sit there like this, and and a lot of the time a headset sitting on, similar to where you are right now, and they're going to have to multitask because they're on wait, waiting for someone to pick up that line to go through your file to say, my client Philip Tarrant has has gone through this process here, and we're sitting here still waiting for you to match price where they are on that loan, and that eventually that'll either be yes we will or no we won't do it, 
And if it's a no, then we go back onto the phone to the BDM of a separate bank saying your policy says X, Y, Z. We're looking to take these loans here. What can you do for a price? We do a price comparison. We look through a whole host of other data to figure out where you're going to be best positioned. A lot of the time, we're just going to work to get that rate down with your existing bank. There is no value from a numerical perspective for us yeah. to do that. But we know and that and that's by the way, it's like. easier for the broker to keep the client with the current bank if they negotiate on it because it means that the client is in a better financial position with cheaper rates and therefore gives them capacity potentially to continue investing in property and the right loan for them. Do, do other banks more responsive to brokers than than Johnny Punch Clock, i.e. me? When I call them and go, oh, if you, if you don't give me a cheaper rate, I'm going to refinance. We're going to sit there, get stuffed. I know, I know you won't because you're too lazy to do it. Like, does a broker have more leverage uh, to get a cheaper rate if they're on the phone going, if you don't match this price, I'm going to take it to bank down the road here? In short, yes, Phil, 100%. It's basically the, the alternative of saying you buy retail, we buy wholesale. And and not only are we calling up a, a potentially a, a 1300 line, we're typically calling up our, our specified business development manager who works with us from that bank. And that person knows that it's not just your loans, it's every loan that we've sent to that particular lender. And they've got their own KPIs to meet and they've got bonuses that or attach those KPIs. Our job is to say, we don't want to go to 1300 number. We want to go to our BDM who understands if they do wrong by us, and it's not just your deal, it's going to be all the they, other They want more business from you also, right? They want to go, hey, this person over here at this bank is really, really cool. We'll send you a mortgage there because we know we're going to get competitive rates. They're quick. They're agile. They're, they're, they're accommodating. They're able to sort of look at the flexibility if you're self-employed. So relationships count in this game. They count more than anything else and especially in that example in that instance and if you're calling up to a bank to go through a, a wait list and a, and a hotline uh, i mean not only is it soul destroying and, and most of the time worthless as far as the conversation is concerned the other big part is that you're typically not going to get the outcome that we're going to get because you simply just don't have the clout because you're n equals one we're typically n equals 100 on that same example where we've got multiple people in the same position and they know they're going to try and better that for not just you, but for everyone else who's in your position. So we know we've got a solution. Mm. Okay. Well, that's a bit tactical, but the reality of the world that we operate today as property investors, or even in our own, and let me get this right, because I think there might be a bit misconception. Finney also does own occupy stuff, not just property investment stuff, right? Unequivocally, mate. I mean, I yeah. think what the owner occupies stuff is is probably a little bit more hand in glove for a broker, and we do that better than anyone. But mm. the investor stuff is where it gets complicated, and typically our investors are also owner occupiers from a mortgage perspective. So yeah. we try to make sure that a yeah, absolutely, if you're an owner occupier, we will one hundred percent be in the position to help you. But you get that right, you get the owner pocket occupier, so you might have some equity there. It's all quite strategic, Correct. right? Yeah. Okay. Correct. Yeah. All right. Okay. So. Um, the world's changing, 4.1% official cash rate. Now, you think about it, most of us, if you're a professional, getting probably discounts of 3%. So really, the the the, the official cash rate might be 4.1%. The standard variable rate for a bank is probably closer to 8 to 9%, and most of us getting discounts off that. So if that's the actual standard variable, right, 8 to 9%, plus a 3% buffer, right, a lot of people are getting assessed at 12%. Mortgages, yep. right? So we've heard that that's starting to change. I think there's an understanding of acceptance whether APRA is going to rubber stamp it or not. There's an acceptance that we're we're, we're towards the, the top of this rate cycle, so they're going to be a little bit more accommodating for helping people in that position of the fixed rate slip. If that's you, speak to your broker right now. If you feel trapped in your mortgage, it's the last place you want to be. It's why mortgage breaking was invented, so people don't feel trapped in their mortgages. A good broker will find a way. They'll find a way to see you right. And it might mean from moving from a major bank to a second tier bank or a uh, a mutual type lender. Um, that's all cool. That's okay. Because if you can shave every single basis point off your mortgage, that's more money in your back pocket in your repayments that you can choose to offset, to reduce your, your, your interest even further. You can choose to reinvest in property moving forward, where you can choose to go and buy beluga caviar like Paul does on amazon.com now. Where do people go if they need more information, Paul? Uh, Finney.com.au, F-I-N-N-I.com.au. Um, yep. you, you, can, you can click one button, get straight in touch with our team and start that conversation immediately. So, so even if you've got, let's like, hypothetical, and and look, I, I think Finney's a good outfit. I, invest, I, I believe so much I invested in the business, but hypothetically, someone calls up going, I've got 10 mortgages, you're not my mortgage broker, can you help me get 
cheaper rates on this. Can you guys help out with that? It's like all this sure. sort of stuff. There's always a way. Absolutely. And Newsflash, I personally have, have debt with a range of banks directly with banks, but I'll also engage Finney myself personally via brokers within the Finney team to do work for, for certain loans that I've got directly with banks because I know that they actually have avenues to get better outcomes than I have. And I know with your refinance, it's, it's a very similar scenario where you've already got debts with banks, but you know that that channel is going to get a better outcome. And not only that, um, it's going to be essentially a lot less work for you personally to be doing and they do it on your behalf. Yeah, and I'll share this story. Uh, your team's working through it right now and, and you know, it's I'm a property investor and it's a bit complicated, so it's quite a, a cumbersome process. But I might stay with some of the lenders that I'm with right now. I might yeah. not. Um, uh, but one of the things tactically uh, I'm doing, I'm not looking to... I'm not looking to refinance to extract equity. I'm not going to do any of that sort of stuff. I just want a cheaper rate and lower repayments. And the the, the main thrust in me doing a refinance right now is is largely all of my loans inside of the or all of the loans inside the smart property investment portfolio, which I've spoken about for years, are P and I, right? I don't want to be paying principal at the moment. So um, and that's because I just don't want to, um, not because I can't. Uh, so I want to reduce the uh, interest rate um, repayments that I make into interest only. So it's going to save me a lot of money every year. I've done some back of the envelope calculations and it's a substantial amount of money. Now, with the right focus on on market rate mortgages, I can get back to where that holy grail is in properties, the growing portfolio, which is not burning too much cash on the way through. So that's a key focus. So watch this space. I'm going to do a big podcast on that. Might get our, our accountant in to help uh, have a chat around that as well. He can give some sense and and common sense uh, to it all as well. But that's very tactical stuff. So Paul, finney.com.au, any question around mortgages, you'll take it. And if they can't help, yeah, they might even just go, hey, you're going to have to walk into a bank branch to sort of that yourself. Completely, but you'll get that you'll get that honest opinion because I mean, to your point, mate, is that it's not because we're potentially going to be able to do the deal or not. Um, but what you will get is some 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 actual staff advice to say, hey, look, this is going to be better off elsewhere, or you're probably better off just having that deeper conversation with your bank because you're going to get a better deal with them and it's less hassle. But that conversation has to start. So finney.com.au and they can start that conversation immediately. All right, good. Bit longer today, Paul, but I think justified considering uh, the rise in interest rates. Uh, albeit uh, a little while ago. Um, what you can control is getting on the phone, speaking to your mortgage broker and working out what you're going to do. Don't put your head in the sand. If it's hurting, there's a good reason why. Move quickly to fix it, ameliorate it, capitalise on it, move forward. That's what I'd be doing. That's Paul Glossop, CEO of Finney Mortgages, Finney, F-I-N-N-I.com.au. Go and check these guys out. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Smartpropertyinvestment.com.au, Smart Property HQ, social media, Please keep those reviews coming uh, wherever you're tuning into this, most likely on the Real Estate Podcast Network. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you again next time. Until then, bye-bye. The information featured in this podcast is general in nature and does not take into consideration your financial situation or individual needs and should not be relied upon. Before making any investment, insurance, tax, property or financial planning decision, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Guests appearing on this podcast may have a commercial relationship with the companies mentioned.